What's up everyone? I'm gonna just jump right into this video because it's gonna be pretty long or at least longer than I prefer. Uh, basically the video is gonna be broken up into four sections. It's gonna start with the basics, then it's gonna show the enemy and item noises and sounds that they make, then it's gonna show different ways to adjust the tempo, and finally I'm gonna put together a little song for you and show a couple of variations. Also, if you happen to make any levels based on the knowledge that you learned from this video, I would love to see it, so definitely post those level IDs in the comments. So the first thing you want to do is quiet the area when you play, because if you click play, then the theme's normal background music is going to play like this. Here we go! So in order to quiet it down, you go to the sound effects, grab this sound effect, apply it onto Mario, and as soon as you hit play, it'll silence the area. Here we go! Now unfortunately, in editor itself, you actually can never silence it completely, which is kind of annoying when you're trying to like listen for the notes. But this is the best we can do. To start off, a music note is triggered by something bouncing on it. The pitch of the note is based on how high up the note is. If you tap the music note, you can hear the note, though I do wish they would have made it louder. Technically, the top note does make a sound, but you'd have to make some contraption to launch an enemy or object on top of it, and I'm not even sure how you would do it with most things, aside from like this example. Here we go! Every enemy and object will make a different sound when they hit a music block. So how do we make a sound? You drop an enemy or item on a music note and voila! Here we go! It plays that note each time it's hit. Every sound has its lowest pitch with the music note at the bottom and its highest pitch at the top. You can put a roof over the item or enemy and position it higher or lower to make it hit the note faster. But here's a problem. Many enemies walk left and right. So just placing a Goomba here will cause it to bounce once and then walk off. Here we go! So you'll need to put up some walls around it to prevent that from happening with most enemies. Here we go! And if you're curious what each enemy and item sounds like when it hits a music block, you're in luck. Here are the sounds that every one of them make. The twister does not trigger the music block.
Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now what you're seeing is how to make sounds, but it's not how we put them together to make music. All music levels require some sort of constant screen scrolling, like with Mario walking or running. One important thing you must know is that items in Mario Maker 2 do not spawn until they are within three or fewer blocks from the outside of the visible window. What I mean by this is that if you see this solid line, that's the end of the visible window at the start. If I place this music note on the fourth block, you don't hear it at the start. Here we go! But if I placed it anywhere closer to Mario, it would play when the level loads. Here we go! So you always want the first note of your song to be placed at the spot fourth to the right of the visible window or farther. So if you place a music note on the spot fourth from the edge, you would hear it as soon as the screen starts to scroll. This right here is how music is made in Mario Maker. As the screen scrolls, music notes come within that four outer block threshold and they get played. Here we go! But back to my example here of the Goombas hopping up and down. This wouldn't work well in a music level because it keeps hopping as you walk by it and then eventually stops making the noise when it's off screen far enough. In most cases, we need a way to play the note only one time. The solution to do this is like so. We'll take the Goomba for example, which is a piano sound. Instead of bouncing endlessly like this, you would do a setup like this, where the Goomba hits the music block when it spawns and then never gets played again. Here we go! This can be done with a cloud, donut, mushroom platform, or semi-solid because they allow the item to overlap it and when they're hit, they make the noise and stay above the music block without making another sound. Here we go! Then you would just position the music notes the same distance apart from each other, and then to test it out, we restart the level and begin walking. Here we go! In this example, I placed each Goomba four spots apart, and this is because in standard music, you have a beat every four quarter notes. If that doesn't make sense, that's okay, don't worry about it, but basically, the best standard beat is where each note is four spots apart. Now, there are lots of different ways to adjust the speed of the notes. You can either put the notes closer together, or you can choose a different speed of how Mario goes through the level. Our previous example had Mario walking, but you can also do Mario running. Here we go! Or you can do any of the following. So how do we put all this together and make a song? What I did was I grabbed a little bit of basic music of Mary Had a Little Lamb that shows each note that's played in the song. It's a very basic song, but it'll give you the idea. So what we're doing is we're gonna put each note at each beat. And like I said, each beat is every four notes. And we start from the very bottom, which is C, then C sharp, D, D sharp, and then E. 
So looking at the sheet music here, the E note is positioned right here. And so we make our little contraption with the Goomba. Here we go. And then we're going to go over four spaces and we're going to go down to D, which according to our diagram here is right here. And we will make our contraption and then go over four beats and down to the C position and place our note block there. And we will proceed so on and so forth with this through the entire song. I'm not going to show you each individual note that I place, but this gives you the idea. As long as you look at this diagram, then you'll be able to know where to place each note. So with our finished product, let's hear how it sounds. Here we go. So something sounds a little bit wrong. There's actually a part in this song where there's not a rest. I actually had a note placed here where there should have been no note. So what I'm going to do is get everything and move it all to the right one beat. And we'll see how it sounds now. Here we go. Sounds great. Now what we could do to add a little more body to the song is to add notes that are one octave higher than the current notes. Now don't get too confused when I say one octave higher. If you look at this diagram, note how there are more than one C's. There's a C here and a C here. And there's an E here and an E here. So basically by making an octave higher, all you're doing is getting the notes from the bottom and you're adding them to the notes that are one octave higher up. So as you can see here, after I've added all of the higher octave notes, you can see that it matches each one of individually. And now let's see how this sounds. Here we go. Sounds a little bit nicer, right? Basically, adding a higher or lower octave to a note makes it sound a little more full. Even though the note is higher or lower, it's just the right amount to sound correct. So let's experiment a little bit. The Hammer Bro will do the electric guitar sound, so how about in the higher octave, we'll do the electric guitar sound, and the lower octave, we'll do a piano. And let's see how that sounds. Here we go. That sounds kind of neat, right? I mean, two different sounds working together, so it's not quite the most beautiful thing, but musically the notes are correct because they're one octave higher. Now, in case you're curious what it sounds like when one set of notes are more than an octave high, uh, we will actually move all of these Hammer Bro notes two steps higher, and you'll just get to see what it sounds like. Here we go. Pretty awful, right? And that is what you get when you do not have notes in the correct octave. If you have C notes or E notes or D notes and you want to do an octave higher, you got to make sure that it matches up to the C, D, E or whatever the letter is. Otherwise, it'll sound pretty terrible. Now for the very last demonstration, I wanted to squeeze in one more music note. Now the P switch is the snare which on the drum is basically the loud noise that keeps the beat going. And I wanted to add the P-switch snare to every other beat along this song. So as you can see here, I'm adding these and let's see what this sounds like. Also, this is with the electric guitar notes corrected back to the correct octave along with the snare sound. Here we go.
So it's kind of neat. You got the snare sound and the electric guitar and the piano all working together. It's not exactly beautiful, but you get the idea. You definitely can combine instruments as long as they all have similar types of sounds or at least sound nice when worked together. And if in doubt, just do an octave higher or lower and you're basically guaranteed that the song will sound great. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. This was definitely intended just for beginners, so if you've already made a music level, I doubt you would have learned anything new here. Uh, but if you did enjoy this, uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know if I forgot anything important. And also, if you make any levels with the knowledge that you learned from this video, I would love to see them. So post them in the comments below as well. And as always, if you want to see future Mario Maker 2 videos of all kinds, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.